Hey there guys, so yeah, let's talk about some of the fights that happened on the Israel Madrimov vs Terence Crawford card that happened on the weekend. Um, so I'm not going to be covering all of the fights that happened um, on the card. Um, I want to make individual videos on a lot of them. Um, and either just talk about where those guys go uh, in the future and what fights they should have. Um, but I want to cover three of the fights. I want to talk about the David Morrell vs Kaladzic fight. Um, I want to talk about Isaac Cruz vs um, Jose Valenzuela. Um, and Andy Ruiz vs Jarrell Miller. Um, so yeah, the other fights will probably just cover at some point down the line. Um, so yeah, as it was the lowest on the card, I suppose I'll talk about David Morrell vs Kaladzic first. Um, now, there's been a lot of controversy with this fight. Um, obviously, David Morrell won a very wide, unanimous decision um, over Kaladzic, and he won the WBA regular light heavyweight title, I believe. Um, and obviously, the DAZN commentary, which, you know, by the way, and this is... It's becoming, you know, a formality at this point. The DAZN commentary was awful. Um, you had Sergio Mora, who, in my opinion, is one of the worst commentators in the sport. Um, you know, the way I would describe Sergio Mora is he is the American equivalent of Matthew Macklin. You know, he's just that sort of commentator. Um, you know, he's pretty, pretty washed, to be honest. Um, and then you have... Um, Chris Mannix, who, I mean, you can sum him up in just by saying he's Demetrius Andrade's number one fanboy. Um, and, you know, these guys tend to, obviously with a lot of commentators, they tend to create, like, false robbery narratives. You know, I've, I've talked about this in the past, I believe. Um, you know, you, you you watch a fight like Derek Chisora versus Robert Hellenius, um, and you have the Sky Sports commentary telling you that Derek Chisora is doing so well, he's winning the fight, you know, as Robert Hellenius is jabbing his nut in, you know, just schooling him from long range. Um, and, you know, it creates a, a narrative that, you know, isn't true. It, it's the same as Arthur Abraham versus Paul Smith, when Arthur Abraham won the first fight clearly, and then, you know, the British commentary, that I, th I believe they had Paul Smith winning the fight, even though he clearly lost. Um, and I think... The DAZN commentary did a bit of the same here. Um, now, obviously, Sergio Mora was, you know, he was on Kaladzic's dick all night, to be honest. He was just riding him hard, um, saying how well he was doing on the back foot, <laughs> saying, um, you know, Kaladzic, he's coming with a game plan. He's really executing his game plan. Um, you know, he's winning these rounds. You know, what I saw from the fight, I mean, I saw David Morrell on the front foot. I saw him landing the harder shots. I saw him landing more shots. Um, I saw him outworking Kaladzic. I, I saw him backing him up all night. Um, I saw Kaladzic, you know, he went in the ring to do what Jack Catterall did against Josh Taylor in the first fight. He went in there to steal the decision, essentially. Um, you know, he went in there to do, like, the bare minimum to take a round. You know, he'd land a few good shots. He wouldn't really throw, open up very often. You know, he would make sure he wasn't getting knocked out, and he would just open up just with enough shots to potentially take the round. Um, and he would be very negative, he would, you know, run, <laughs> he would do a lot of running, um, and, you know, just make it a very exploitative and just boring performance, to be honest. Um, and I don't really think fighting styles like that should really be, you know, appreciated, you know, by the judges. I mean, you had David Morrell, who's coming forward on the front foot, as I said, you know, he was the man trying to make the fight, trying to make it entertaining, you know, for the audience. He was letting his hands go, he was landing the hard shots on Kaladzic, you know, clean shots on Kaladzic's chin. Um, and I did think David Morrell, you know, he underperformed a bit, you know, he, he wasn't, he didn't look like his usual self where he's just dominating guys. Um, but, you know, when you've got an opponent who's that negative, it is difficult to really look your best, you know, considering Kaladzic's very big as well for the weight, you know, he's got a long reach. Um, Morrell was having to close the distance. Um, and I would say he underperformed. I expected him to do a bit better against Kaladzic. Um, but, I mean, it's not obviously not all his fault. Kaladzic was very negative. Um, but I've, I've always been very impressed with David Morrell. Um, you know, from what he showed in that fight, he showed he could take a shot. You know, Kaladzic can punch. You know, he can really crack with that right hand, as we've seen, you know, in some of his past fights. Um, you know, the Marcus Brown fight. Um you know, he's he's very heavy handed, he's very big for the weight. You know, it was David Morrell's first fight at light heavyweight. Um he showed he had a, a nice high guard, 
I mean, you know, he was blocking shots very well. Um, David Morales got very fluid feet. His foot works very good. You know, he can crack. You know, he's very good on that front foot, and he can mix it up. He can box on the back foot as well at times. Um, and what I see from David Morales, I think if this if this guy fought someone like David Benavides, um, and you know, most people would probably favour Benavides based on this performance. I think David Morales got everything, you know, necessary to beat David Benavides. You know, maybe even by stoppage. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, um, you know, the way Benavides fights, you know, he has to walk through his opponents to get a victory. Um, you know, he can't really box on the back foot. You know, he, he's very one-dimensional. He's only got one style of fighting. Um, you know, he has to come forward. You know, and um, you know, with Morel, Morel's superior reach advantage. You know, with his physical size, he's just as big as Benavides. Um, you know, Benavides tends to win fights based on his phys physical size. Um, I mean, you saw against Fosdick, um, you know, he really didn't look that good against someone who was washed up and, you know, not really there to win. Um, and based on what I've seen from David Morrell, I think he has the power to keep Benavides honest. Um, I don't think Benavides would just walk at Morrell like he does his other opponents. Um, and I think Morrell could probably outbox Benavides. I think he could land the more solid shots. Um, I, th I I just don't I just can't see Benavides beating Morel you know just based on what I've seen from both guys um, I don't think um, you know Morel would get um, you know break under the pressure or anything like that I think he'd be able to hurt Benavides I think he'd be able to land the cleaner shots I think he'd be able to outbox him you know ben we've seen Benavides outbox by guys like Caleb Plant um, and you know for rounds but the problem is the plant gassed you know and he was so, so much smaller than Benavides um, uh, you know he was just able to walk through and, and break him down eventually um, but I don't see David Morrell just you know getting tired and getting broken down like plant did I think Morrell would be able to outbox Benavides and think he'd be able to do it for you know 12 rounds to be honest I think that fight would be um, a clear win for David Morrell so I definitely want to see that next um, I know Benavides is probably targeting the Dimitri Bivol versus Arta Baturbiev winner um, and you know you may as well considering it's probably going to be for all the belts but you know if he can't get that fight I'd like to see him fight um, David Morrell you know both guys put in a fairly lackluster performance by their standards so I mean may as well get it on see who you know is the true contender to fight for those titles those titles um but yeah i thought david morrell won the fight clearly i mean a lot of people saying that kaladzic won the fight i think that's just based on you know what the commentary was telling them um you know there's no way kaladzic won that fight being that negative i thought the scorecards were pretty fair to be honest i thought 117 111 i thought that was pretty fair to be fair um you know i, I could definitely see morrell winning nine or ten rounds you know just based on making the fight outlanding Kaladzic. Um and yeah, I, I mean I like what I've seen from Morel, but I think he could have put in a bit better performance, but obviously, you know, Kaladzic was very negative. So yeah, moving on from that fight, um let's talk about uh, Pitbull Cruz versus Jose Valenzuela. Now going into this fight I didn't really know anything about um Jose Valenzuela. Um I know he beat Chris Colbert, um and a lot of people thought he beat him in the first fight as well. Um, I believe he got knocked out by De Los Santos as well um, before Shakur Stevenson um, but I didn't really know much about this guy, you know, I knew he was a big underdog um, you know, based on most people, what most people were saying and based on the odds um, and you know, I think a lot of people were expecting this to be quite a straightforward victory for Pitbull Cruz um, and I like, I like Pitbull Cruz, I like his style you know, I like his high guard, I like the way he tucks his chin, he's quite hard to hit clean, I like his, um, you know, just his aggression in the ring, you know, he's someone who I, I really like watching um, but to be fair, I think Jose Valenzuela he sort of did what Giovanni Cabrera did but I think he did it to a bit of a higher level you know, they I think Valenzuela and Cabrera are quite similar fighters I think they fight a similar way um, and obviously Cruz really struggled against um, Cabrera you know, just boxing on the back foot you know, using his height and reach, and that's those southpaw angles. Um, and you know, if Valenzuela was able to do the same thing, um, you know, just box from range, you know, keep Pitbull, you know, behind that jab, 
um, you know, just counter him on the way in with uppercuts and just, you know, make him fall short, make him jump in and counter him with like a left hand. You know, he's going to be able to win this fight. And um, yeah, that's exactly what he did. Um, he, you know, he, he sort of struggled a bit in the early rounds, I thought. Um, I thought he could have given Cruz a couple of the early rounds, but, you know, I have to say the fifth round, I thought Valenzuela was winning some of those rounds quite handily. Um, I can see an argument for Pitbull Cruz, you know, winning a lot, a lot of the rounds just based on his aggression, just based on, you know, landing some really clean, effective shots and some hard shots. Um, but I think Valenzuela rightly won the fight. I just think... You know, he, he was doing the better work in most of the rounds. You know, he was the ring general, as people like to say. Um, and he was just countering nicely. He was just boxing on the back, boxing nicely. Um, Pitbull Cruz looked a bit one-dimensional. I mean, yeah, the same as the Cabrera fight. I mean, Cruz, if things aren't really going his way in the ring, he doesn't really have anything else to... You know, he can't really change his style. You know, it's... He's got one style and that's it. Like, if that doesn't work, he hasn't really got anything else. He'll just, you know, you could tell in this fight he was just getting more and more frustrated um, that he couldn't, you know, land that knockout shot. Um, and, you know, he was starting to swing a lot more wildly. He was starting to really put a lot of steam in his punches. Um, and, you know, obviously as he, as he was doing that, um, Valenzuela was just able to get out the way of those big swings and just counter him. Um, and... He, you know, I, I suppose you could say Pitbull Cruz got a bit, a bit exposed, but I think the game plan has always been out there on how to beat him. You know, just box him from long range if you got the high and reach advantages. Um, and yeah, it was pretty straightforward. Um, you know, score into that fight. I thought, I thought um, the early rounds were quite competitive. I thought they were quite hard to score, but then as the fight went down the stretch, I thought Valenzuela was winning rounds pretty, conf pretty conclusively. Um, and you know, I don't really think Valenzuela is like a great fighter or anything. I think he does a lot of things wrong um, that he got away with because Cruz was a lot smaller. Um, I think he pulls out with his chin in the air. I think, you know, he he does roll shots quite well, but obviously when he fights with his hands down, every time he gets cracked, he's getting cracked clean. Um, and, you know, his defense isn't very good. Uh, but he's pretty good. He's got some skill. You know, he's a southpaw. He's got... He's quite a good counter puncher. He was able to draw Cruz under shots well. Um, but to be fair, I don't really see him doing anything in the 140 pounds division. Um, you know, the guys you got there, Sobriel Matias, someone like that, I think he would probably beat the brakes off Valenzuela, to be fair. Um, you know, you got other guys. I don't really think this guy would beat Devin Haney. Um, I don't think he would beat, like, Tiafimo Lopez or anything like that. Um, you know, I think I don't think he'll really hold the title for a, a significant amount of time, but you know, it was a good win for him. You know, Pitbull Cruz is very hyped. You know, he's very hyped up because of um, a lot of people love watching him fight. Um, and yeah, fair play, fair play to Valenzuela for getting the upset. Um, and you know, he made, he made it look quite routine at times, to be fair. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the next fight: um, Andy Ruiz versus Jarrell Miller. Now. I just had a feeling go when this fight was announced I always thought like I was thinking about the fight I thought prime for prime I was thinking Jerome Miller beats Andy Ruiz I was thinking you know Andy Ruiz I've never really rated Andy Ruiz like it's a bit of a hot take but I think he's one of the most overrated fighters like in the last couple of years in boxing um like he's got a bit of ability like he's he's got fast hands you know he's tough you know he can punch a bit um you know he's he's quite he's a decent pressure fighter he can counter punch but like if you compare this guy to like Usyk Fury just you know these elite guys he's got nothing for them like Tyson Fury would beat the brakes off Andy Ruiz Usyk would school him you know in a rematch Joseph Parker probably scores him at this point um you know Zhile Zhang would probably knock him out um you know I, I just don't I've never seen the hype with Andy Ruiz. A lot of people, you know, they say, "Oh, if this were, if this guy was dedicated to the sport, he would be like an all-time great." I just don't see it, to be honest. I mean, as I've said, I think he's got a bit of ability, but I don't, see, I don't think this guy could ever be like an elite level heavyweight. I just, I've never seen, you know, amazing ability with him. I don't think he would ever be able to beat the likes of Tyson Fury or Usyk. 
you know, even if he was like a committed athlete, I still don't think he'd be able to. Um, you know, you compare him to like a Derek Chisora type. Like if if Andy Ruiz fought the guys that Chisora fought, if he fought like Klitschko, Hay, like a prime Robert Hellenius, like um, who else did Chisora fought everyone? You know, if he fought Usyk, if he fought um, like a prime Kubrat Pulev, how many wins would Ruiz have out of that? To be fair, I don't think he would have many. So, you know, he's just a, in my opinion, he's just like a heavyweight gatekeeper. Um, obviously, he beat AJ, but I mean, AJ clearly underestimated him, in my opinion. I mean, you know, he's going to fight Jarrell Miller. Um, and then you have this replacement opponent on short notice who was coming off a win against Dimitrenko. You know, this fat guy who had lost to Joseph Parker, who Joshua dominated. Um, and, you know, I mean, it makes, you know, you can't really blame Joshua for over overlooking this guy, considering, you know, what he'd look like in fights and his body shape. You know, and obviously he went in there and he knocked, Josh knocked Joshua out. Um, but, I mean, you saw what happened in the rematch. I mean, Joshua just schooled him behind the jab. Um, you know, easy fight. And, I mean, if Joshua fought him again, he'd probably beat him quite convincingly. Um, and to be honest, Jarrell Miller is someone who I think is a bit underrated. Um, I have thought that for quite a while. Um, like obviously Jarrell Miller's not a great technical technical fighter or anything like that. You know, he is what he is. He's like a punching bag who's big, got a granite chin, comes forward. You know, great stamina, looks to work that body, looks to break you down. Um, and I think when Jarrell Miller actually takes a fight seriously, when he's in shape. Um, I think he would probably give any heavyweight out there a tough fight, you know, if, even the likes of AJ, even like the likes of Usyk, I think he would give all these guys a tough fight when he's in shape, um, and, you know, I, I just fit, obviously there was a lot of question marks over Jarrell Miller, um, you know, he had a long layoff, he hasn't really looked, he didn't really look good um, since he came back, he fought um, the Argentinian journeyman, um, I can't remember that guy's name for whatever reason, um, and then he fought ancient Lucas Brown um, and he didn't really look good in those fights to be honest um, and, and then he got knocked out by Daniel Dubois you know he started well but then got absolutely battered down the stretch you know it took a lot of damage you know it could have been like a career ending beating um, and you know it, it was still questionable how much Jarrell Miller had left after getting his app you know absolutely battered by Daniel Dubois um, but to be honest, if there was a prime for prime, I would always favour Gerald Miller to beat Andy Ruiz, um, just based on styles. Um, and yeah, Gerald Miller probably dropped most of the early rounds. Um, I don't think Ruiz won four in a row, like the commentary was saying. I thought Miller won one of those rounds. I can't remember which one it was. Um, but you know, after the early rounds, Ruiz just completely gassed. You know, Miller was starting to take the fight to him on the front foot. He was working that body. You know, he was just using his uh, superior size, his superior work rate. You know, he was just outworking Andy Ruiz. You know, Ruiz couldn't hurt him. He couldn't keep him off. Um, you know, if Daniel Dubois wasn't able to seriously hurt Jarrell Miller, then Andy Ruiz didn't really have a chance of hurting him. Um, and, you know, I just thought Jarrell Miller won most of the mid and late rounds. Um, just based on his aggression, based on his work rate. Um, and I thought Jarrell Miller probably won... 8-4, 9-3 type decision. Um, I thought it was quite a clear win. I don't think there should have been any controversy. Um, I think, you know, Jarrell Miller was a rightful winner. Just based on, like, objective scoring criteria. Um, but yeah, obviously, inexplicably, they gave the, the fight a draw. Um, I mean, it's not really a surprise. I mean, Andy Ruiz is someone who has been quite politically protected I mean if anyone who's allowed to get a victory over AJ you know it has some a certain level of protection you know um, and you know this was this fight took place in LA I believe you know there's a big I think Andrew Ruiz has got a lot of fans in LA um, and you know they gave him a hometown to sit a uh, draw um, and you know Jerome Miller I don't really think Jerome Miller's got a lot of protection, to be honest. I mean, Jerome Miller, yeah, obviously he's failed, like, numerous PED tests. You know, in boxing alone, I believe he failed one in kickboxing as well. Um, and, 
you know, he he came back from like a hiatus of like three years, and he failed another drug test, and he was going to fight. Um, and then you know he came back, <laughs> lost to Daniel Dubois by knockout. Apparently had a short camp going into that fight. Um, and then fights Andy Ruiz. You know he's the B side. He's he's the opponent in this fight. He's supposed to be making Ruiz look good. You know he's the washed up veteran who's just being beaten up by Daniel Dubois. You know goes in there, wins the fight, and then just you know gets robbed. I mean, it's not really a surprise. I mean we've seen you know B sides get robbed in boxing plenty of times. Um, but I mean, there was only one rightful winner, to be honest. I mean, Jerome Miller clearly won that fight, in my opinion. Um, I don't really think there's much debate about it. Um, and in a rematch, I probably think Jerome Miller wins again. Um, I know Andy Ruiz claimed he, you know, he broke his hand. Um, but he seemed to be using the right hand, you know, down the stretch. I mean, I don't think he stopped throwing it or anything like that. Um, you know, if... If he had like a Zach Parker versus Darrell Williams type hand injury where he just doesn't use it, you know, that's a fair enough excuse. I mean, you know, that's an excuse for losing the fight. But, you know, he seemed to be using the right hand down the stretch. He was just, you know, he sort of run out of, a ga run out of gas. Um, in a rematch, I probably think Jerome Miller wins again. Um, you know, I just, I just think Andy Ruiz, has he still got love for boxing? Has he still, you know, he made a lot of money with the Joshua fights. Um, probably made a lot in this fight as well um, and I don't know what Ruiz fights for whether he fights for legacy whether he fights for money but you know in his last few fights it just hasn't looked as tenacious as when he fought Anthony Joshua the first time you know against Joshua in the, in the second fight he sort of stunk the joint out didn't really do anything came in fat you know went to the buffet had a bit too much to eat um, against uh, Chris Ariola, who was like 40 years old, washed up, been beaten up more times than I can remember. You know, it was a much more competitive fight than people were expecting. You know, he got dropped, got hurt numerous times. Um, then he fought Luis Ortiz, who's about, he, he was literally a geriatric in that fight. They took him out of the care home, brought him into the ring. Um, you know, Luis Ortiz, it gave him an extremely competitive fight. I mean, even though he was dropped three times, he still only lost by a point, you know, on the official scorecards. Um, and then, you know, loses to Jerome Miller, you know, 8-4, 9-3. I just don't know what Andy Ruiz has got left at this point. I don't know if he's still got the heart for boxing. I don't know if he still loves boxing. Um, I don't know whether he retires from here, you know, whether the hand injury um, hampers him. I don't know, but... I'd like to see Jarrell Miller fight someone like Gilles Zhang or maybe like Ajit Kabayel, someone like that. I think the Zhang fight is interesting. I think, you know, that would be one where if Miller could survive like the early, like six rounds, then you could probably win the fight down the stretch. But, you know, the way Miller fights, you know, just being a big punching bag, he would have to absorb like a CT level beating. You know, with Zhang's left hand and his right hook. I don't know if he'd be able to take those shots, to be honest. But, you know, Miller's got a granite chin. Um, and to be honest, I could actually see him beating someone like Ajit Kabayel. You know, just based on st just based on styles. I think Kabayel could outbox him. But I think Miller, if he came in in shape, you know, just looking to break him down with his superior weight and size. I think he could do something. I honestly do. I'd like to see Miller fight Joseph Parker. I think that would be interesting. Um, and you know, if Joshua beats Dubois, you know, Chuck Miller in with uh, AJ. Um, you know, when the fight was going to happen, I actually thought Jarrell Miller was going to beat AJ um, for whatever reason. I just thought, you know, Jarrell Miller's style of fighting, if Joshua didn't get him out of there, you know, early, I thought he could probably beat, break AJ down that, uh, you know, down the stretch. Um, I don't really think I don't think the same way now. I think Jarrell Miller is a bit past his prime at this point. I think Joshua would probably knock him out at this point. Um, but yeah, I still think it would be interesting to see if you know Jarrell Miller can still absorb that beating that Joshua would give him and you know break him down on the stretch. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got to say about those fights. I enjoyed the card. I think there were some good fights on it. Um, obviously, the main event was a lot more um, competitive than people were expecting. Um, and yeah, roll on to the uh, September 21st card in uh, London, uh, you know, headlined by Joshua versus Dubois. So yeah, 
thanks for watching guys let me know your uh, thought of the fights in the comments and yeah god bless